All right, well, it's 6.30. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let me just say, on behalf of the men and women behind me, who is, this is our cabinet team, and you're going to be meeting each and every one of them in a few minutes. But I want to speak for all of them. Just first of all, thank you for coming tonight to tell you that we're absolutely thrilled to be here at the Philcom Center. And this is our third town hall meeting, and we started out last week in Ever First, Why and I last Thursday night, and tonight here in Waipahu. This is your night. We didn't come here tonight to make speeches. We came here tonight to listen to you, to hopefully answer your questions. And let me just say up front, we'll answer your questions truthfully. And what I mean by that is you may not hear the answer you want to hear, but we will tell you what we believe, what is truthful, as opposed to telling you what you want to hear, knowing full well we possibly can't deliver on that because that's not going to be good for any of us. And I would hope that by the end of this night, you'll have a complete experience in asking us anything and everything. And really, there are no holes barred. You can ask us anything you want. And that when you leave here tonight, you'll feel that this was worth your while and your time. So we really greatly appreciate that. I do want to kick tonight off, though, with a pule. And we have Jack Legal with us tonight, who's agreed to do this. We thank Jack a great deal for doing this. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Blanjardi. I look at these people and they look like, like, just like me. So I think uh, before we start praying, we should also ask our blessing for these people. Because as you know, being in public office and being a mayor is a tough job. And being a department head and also working as uh, for the city and county of Honolulu is a very tough job. So we ask the Lord for the blessing, first for our mayor, and also for the department heads, for the department personnel. We ask the Lord to continue to bless them so that they will put the needs of the constituents first before theirs, and that they may have the strength and the courage to do what they need to do. Lord, there's a season in time, a time to talk, a time to listen, a time to watch, and a time to act. And tonight, Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity, the town hall meeting, where we can freely talk, we can freely listen, we can freely watch, and we can freely act. We ask you to give us the strength and the courage to open our minds and hearts to different ideas, ideas that will help us that will inspire us, that will build us together as a building block for our community. We ask the Lord to continue to bless each and every one of us as we go in our own way, because we know that we all have our own goals in life, the same goals that we do. We just kind of take a different path together, but we're gonna end up in the same destination. Lord, we thank you for this moment in time, for this beautiful day, for this beautiful evening, Bless those who are present tonight. We now ask you this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Jack. That was beautiful. I appreciate your kind words. All right, so we'd like to start on time. So I'll give you some, some ground rules here, okay? We're starting at 6.30. We're going to end at 8.30, okay? We're going to two hours. Some of us will still hang around a little bit after that, but we're hoping that in the next two hours, you're going to have ample time to ask what you want to ask. We want to engage as many of you as we can. Uh, as I said earlier, you are going to meet each one of the cabinet. Um, we didn't come to make speeches, however, we do want to give two five-minute presentations, two five-minute presentations by two different people um, based on subject matter we think is relevant for this community that we want to share with you. The rest of the night is going to be Q&A. So I want to, first of all, just a couple of thank yous and a couple of acknowledgments. I want to thank the Philcom Center. This is a very, really great facility to host this and letting us come here tonight. We really appreciate that. I want to thank the people from Cinoblon who helped us with the food tonight, the lumpia back there that was donated by them. That's really terrific. We have a round of applause. And, and, I know, and I know he may be embarrassed, but I would be remiss because in two plus years in public office, I can appreciate the challenges of the job and 
Jack was kind enough to allude to it, but I do want to introduce uh, former Senator Clarence Nishihara sitting right here. Just, uh, thank you for coming. I saw House Rep Sam Kong is here. Where's Sam? Saw him. State Senator Brandon Elefante is here tonight. <laughs> Miss you on the council, Brandon. We enjoy it. Is, is Augie here yet? I think Augie is supposed to come. If he's here, we'll probably stop the show and introduce him when he comes. He's not here. Um, so look, here's what I'd like you to do, and then I'll say a couple other things about tonight, is I'd like to go through and quickly just have each one of our cabinet members. There's either a director here tonight. What else? Oh, Senator Henry Aquino. I'm sorry, I didn't see the senator. Sorry, Senator. My bad. I didn't see you, sir. I'm sorry. Thanks for being here. All right, somebody Matt, else. Matt Wire's here. Oh, and Matt Councilman. Let's just keep this up. This is good. You can tell we're we're a real good team here. They, they come up, they whisper, "Hey, stupid, you gotta." This is Councilman Matt Wires here. I didn't, Matt, I didn't see you. I didn't see you. My fault. Is there anyone else that I might have missed? Because, you know, it's okay. Okay, well, I'm not going to miss you. And let me just say before one of them comes up, we'll start with Dr. Jim Ireland. Uh, I don't view this job, even though it's the honor of a lifetime and the challenge of a lifetime for me to serve as the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, this is not an individual journey. Uh, this is a challenge for all of us on our team. And I've been in a lot of places in my 76 years and had a lot of responsibility, but I've never worked with a better group of men and women who are really committed to what they're doing. And I get to see it and feel it every day firsthand. And that's why in the course of these 11 town hall meetings we're having tonight, I wanted all of them to come out. I wanted to bring you the expertise if you have a specific question because it's not just me answering you. I want to make sure you hear from the people who really know what they're talking about and you get the best answer you possibly can. But I really have them here because quite honestly, I want to show them off because they're really hardworking people. They are committed and they know what they're talking about and they know what they're doing. And so with that, I want to kick it off. And look, if you are a director and your deputy is here, I'm going to ask you just to quickly introduce yourself and then introduce your director so we can get through this part of it as quickly as possible. Thank you, Jim. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, love this community. Um, I'm Jim Ireland. I'm the director of emergency services. We have um, ocean safety lifeguards as well as EMS, that's the ambulance service, and the new core program, which is homeless outreach. Thank you again all for coming. I look forward to talking to you. Aloha everyone, I'm Carrie Castle. I'm the Deputy Director with Budget and Fiscal Services. Um, what a great uh, turnout. Thank you so much for coming and I look forward to um, engaging in this important, in, at, at this important time in our lives. Thank you. She works for me. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Um, Lloyd Doninaka, Executive Secretary to the Neighborhood Commission. And I just want to ask, we got any neighborhood board members here or former board members? Okay, good to see you all, thank you. Good evening, Tracy Kubota, Deputy Director for the Department of Enterprise Services, Honolulu Zoo, Golf Courses, Waikiki Shell, Blaisdell Center. Good to see all the familiar faces, thanks for being here. Good evening, I'm Nola Miyasaki. I'm the Director of the Department of Human Resources. Aloha, so great to see everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, one of the things we do besides managing the city's workforce of 11,000 people is we do the recruiting uh, for the city and we brought a jobs, my, my staff, Andrew Hinkle, and we have a jobs table. So if any of you or your family or any of your friends are interested, we'd love to share some information um, with you. So we're right over there, thanks. Good evening, my name is Roger Babcock. I'm director of the Department of Environmental Services. We take care of sanitation, which is wastewater and refuse. And we also have openings. Good evening, my name is Brian Gallagher. I'm the deputy director of the City Department of Design and Construction. We do major road repaving, sidewalk repair, 
uh, drainage repairs, uh, all the renovations for police, fire, parks, any kind of city facility that needs major design and construction renovation. We take care of that, and we also have openings. Check out the booth over there. Hello, hi everybody. I'm Dawn Apuna, director of the Department of Planning and Permitting, or DPP. I'm sure you've heard of us. We do building permits, subdivision, planning, um, all those things related to development. Thank you for having us. My, uh, our deputy director, Jiro Samada, is here too. Thank you. Aloha and good evening, everyone. My name is Denise Iseri Matsubara. I am the new director of the Office of Housing and Homelessness. This is day two for me, so I'm brand new on the job. I came from the Hawaii um, Housing Finance and Development Corporation, and I just want to thank the mayor. It certainly is an honor and a privilege to belong to this esteemed team. Thank you, and thanks for hosting us this evening. Hello, am I uh, Kako, uh, Ernie Lau, Board of Water Supply. I also have my deputy, uh, Erwin Kawata. Please stand up, please. Mahalo, everybody. Aloha. Aloha, my name's Anton Krucke. I'm the director of the Department of Community Services. We do all things community. Um, I also have with me Ted Burke, who's our child care uh, coordinator, and also my administrator for community-based development, Daryl Young. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Formby, and I'm very fortunate to have the honor of working with all of the men and women that are up here tonight. I'm the managing director of the city, and it's great to be here at the Philcom Center. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Krishna Jaram. I'm the deputy managing director. Thank you for having us, and thank you for being here tonight. Aloha, everyone. Sam Moku, Chief of Staff for Mayor Blangiardi. Hi, good evening. Aloha. My name is Kehau Pu'u. I'm the Deputy Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, alongside my director, Laura Thielen, who um, was unable to be here tonight. So we take care of the 300 plus parks, facilities, um, <coughs> recreation programs, but we also uh, have a division of urban forestry within our department. So we also oversee all the botanical gardens and 250,000 trees that line our city, tree, uh, our city streets and our parks. Aloha. Yeah, aloha, my name is Stephen Courtney. I'm the Deputy Director of Information Technology. The Director, Mark Wong, who cannot be here tonight, uh, again, um, we provide the um, compute, data storage, network and communications to all these city departments, as well as also providing applications for the public to use. Yeah, thank you. Hi, how's it going? My name is Derek Myashiro. I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of Customer Services. We have the uh, driver's license, motor vehicle registration, satellite city halls, and a uh, public communication division. Happy to answer any questions any of you might have. Thank you. Aloha mai, good evening. John Nouchi, Deputy Director of the City's Department of Transportation Services. Um, with Director Roger Morton, we strive to make all of our roads as safe as possible so that everyone can stroll and roll and get back home safely every night. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Kat Tashner. I'm the Deputy Director at the City's Department of Land Management. We protect, develop, and manage the city's land. Aloha, good evening. I'm Nicola Hedge. I'm the Deputy Director with the Office of Climate Change, Sustainability, and Resiliency. You can probably guess what we do. Excited to be here and answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hiro Toya. I'm the director for the Department of Emergency Management. We coordinate the city's preparedness, response, and recovery from disasters. Hi, <clears throat> good evening. My name is Jason Samala. I'm the deputy fire chief for the fire department. Um, good to be here. Here, to answer any burning questions you may have. No pun intended. <laughs> Aloha nui kako, makanani sala, and I am the Executive Director of the Office of Culture and the Arts. Aloha, good evening. 
I'm Warren Mamizuka. I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of Facility Maintenance. Uh, we maintain over 53,000 uh, street lights on city roads. We also maintain uh, city streams, uh, city roads, and also sidewalks, and also the municipal buildings. Thank you. Good evening, Lori Kahikina, Executive Director and CEO of Honolulu Authority Rapid Transportation, the rail. Hello, good evening. I'm Deputy Chief Roddy Van at Honolulu Police Department. We kind of do a little bit of everything. <laughs> we don't have any open, no, we have choke opening. <laughs> uh, we have our community policing team here. Go out, uh, go and check them out. Um, next to me is also the commander for this area, Major um, Joseph Trinidad. Hello, good evening. Kim Sparlin, Deputy Director for the Office of Economic Revitalization. Rolls right off the tongue. Um, newest office in city government, and we look forward to working with you in revitalizing our economy out of COVID. And one a special um, shout out to Philcom, who has been an amazing partner for us as we were deploying COVID response and COVID relief programs in the last couple of years. Thank you, Kim. One of the things that we did early on, and I'm very proud of, is we stood up a youth commission because we wanted to give the opportunity to young people to see inside, if you will, how city government works, and at the same time, expose them to leadership challenges. And we have from District 9 tonight, I'm gonna to ask you to come up, okay? Uh, it's Ashley Minard, Lindsay, I, Lindsay Minard, right? Millard, Millard, I got it right. <laughs> Lindsay Millard. I didn't know she was going to be here. I'm so pleased she's here. So we just met. And so I'm going to ask you to say a few words about what you're doing, okay? Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Millard. I'm a proud graduate of Waipahu High School. I live in Waikiki. <laughs> I live in Waikele and right now I'm a student at UH West Oahu and as Mayor said, we have a youth commission, a Honolulu youth commission. So we have youth from ages I think 15 to 24, part of this board kind of acting as an advisory board for our council members. I joined last August and so far it's been a great learning experience. I'm learning a lot about how to write resolutions and just voice my opinion to the people in charge of the government here and really make a difference. And I hope you can spread the word to, you know, if you have children or family members in your life, young adults who wanna get involved, you can follow us at Honolulu Youth Commission on Instagram. That's probably the best way to get involved. We're gonna be starting a survey where we really hope that youth can write in their thoughts and then we can use that to kind of guide our next steps in provo proposing new solutions to the city government. So thank you for your time and nice meeting you all. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Lindsay Millard. Millard I, I will not forget that, okay? All right. So I said tonight we're gonna do, just to kick it off, two short presentations. And the first one is on the rail. And I know Lori Kaikin is down the end of the table. You probably noticed that she's at a, in a, in a brace, if you will. But I'm going to have John Nouchi come up here, who's our de deputy uh, director for transportation services. Because while Lori's involved with building the rail, Hart, the city is going to operate and maintain the rail. And as you know, we're going to do that this summer, in July. So with that, I'm going to have John talk about it and just... Um, and you can answer any questions too, John. Okay. Aloha, everybody. It's really great to be back here in the Philcom Center. So three jobs ago, I was at the bus company. I was at OTS, and we fought for rail, even though we were a bus company, because we knew how much rail could do with in combination with bus. So worked with Jack and Filipinos for Rail to really kind of advocate for that. So it's, it's really cool that after working at the bus, working at Hart, and now working at DTS, I can stand before all of you in the same room where a lot of this stuff started and tell you about what's coming up real soon with our grand opening. And for me, it's like, I, I love transit, I love transportation. It's like me being, being a kid again and playing with like a train set, but uh, much more sophisticated. We can go on to the next slide here. So we are aiming, as Mayor said, in the State of the City Address for a July grand opening of rail. So it's here. 
anybody who thinks that, you know, it, it's here. Let's just say it's here. But I wanted to make sure, as we've been doing these town hall meetings around, we've started to discover, you know, maybe people don't know some very important details about it. So first of all, who in here has a holo card? Who in here rides transit? Good. I rode the Route E over here. I used my holo card. The holo card will be good on rail just like it is on bus. It'll be the same fare. All your transfer passes and other privileges capping will apply to the holo card. So just pretend like rail is just like any other bus route in the system. We can go on. So here's a bunch of facts. We are opening 10.7 miles between East Kapolei and Aloha Stadium. And I think no community benefits more from rail than Waipahu. You know, we know people in Waipahu. We love the riders in Waipahu, and I think they, they love our buses because they pack our buses. So if you notice, we will be opening the nine stations listed there between East Kapolei and Aloha Stadium, but notably, we will have stations at um, West Lock, which is near Leoku Street and Don Quixote, and the Waipahu Transit Center right here in, on Hikimoi Street, um, also at Leeward Community College. So one thing super cool about rail is there's a good reason to go upstairs and hop on the rail. The trains will come every 10 minutes whenever it's operating. So if you just miss one, it'll be nine minutes away. Um, it'll operate between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. on weekends and holidays. So again, we have a, a bunch of, we have five different transit centers where all of our buses will come and meet at rail stations and they'll distribute you on your first or your last mile. And we also have parking rides available at UH West Oahu at the Ho'opili station out in um, Kapolei and at the Aloha Stadium station. And we are also serving and linking two University of Hawaii campuses at UH West Oahu and Leeward Community College. So if anybody, if any of the bus riders try find me or ask me, ask me any questions, I'll, I'll be around a little bit after. If you have any specific questions, one thing that I will say about the bus service in Waikele, Kunia, Waipahu, we have a, a good network of bus services. We don't anticipate those changing too much for you guys. So it'll, it'll just deliver you to the same place, same places, same neighborhoods, same frequencies, Waipahu Transit Center and over on by Don Quixote. Um, we can go, is there one more? So that's basically the alignment right there. You can see how it starts off in East Kapolei and it ends at Aloha Stadium. And I think that's all I have actually in terms of slides, right? But I can take any questions now, if it's okay, Mayor, or I can circulate around. You can tell we rehearsed this. Let's, uh, let's have Kat come up and we'll talk about Royal Canadian in a second, John, then we'll, we'll just get on with that. So look, let me just say one thing about the rail. I'm extremely proud of the success we've had to date in getting ourselves ready to begin the rail system in July. Um, just yesterday, we had a meeting in my office with the FTA uh, who came out uh, from the East Coast to meet with us. And I can tell you, uh, compared to the first discussion I had with the FTA after getting elected back in December, a little bit more than two years ago, we've come light years. And I feel we've also come light years with the community in creating a sense of confidence uh, in, in what it is we're going to do. So we'll be happy to talk about the rail and answer any questions. I just think um, you're gonna really love it. You're gonna be really surprised by it. Uh, I think when I took a ride on it, uh, we don't talk about this very much, but I tell you, the view plane alone is terrific. But the efficiency of it, as John said, our ability to have trains come every 10 minutes and have buses there ready to take people where they want to go. And as we work through this whole system, is going to be very, very efficient, especially coming from this side of the island to get to the east side. So with that, I want to bring up Kat Tashner. One of the challenges we saw early on, because we're really, uh, if there's a crisis that we feel we're dealing with, having gone through the COVID crisis, it's the housing crisis. And so we've looked at and we've implemented a whole lot of, I think I'll give you this one, does that work? Okay, Hello. yeah, it does, okay. Um, and so <coughs> Royal Kenia <coughs> is something we're really excited about. It's five acres, I'll let Kat talk about it. Go ahead. Hi, good evening everyone. So I'm excited to present a um, conceptual drawing of an affordable housing project. We call it the Royal Kenia boxcar lot because it's where the boxcar racing facility used to be. It's right next to the Royal Cunea Park and Ride. So I think especially once rail gets up and running, it'll be a really cool um, opportunity to have housing right next to the Park and Ride. So it's an L-shaped parcel um, at the bottom of the L in blue. 
that's a child care facility. I can have Ted talk about it a little bit more, but we're kind of in a child care desert and really, really cool opportunity to build a 30,000 square foot child care facility. Um, Malka of that, there are going to be about 200 units. It's a mix of one bedroom and studio units. Um, they're going to be age restricted, so it's going to be for seniors because we really want to encourage, you know, less parking and more use of the bus um, and to get to the amenities across the street. Uh, those, those are the really big things that I wanted to share with you. Happy to answer questions, um, but it's a really, really exciting opportunity for us and we're excited to share it with you. Thank you. Ted, why don't you give him some insight on the child care facility? Sure, thank you. Um, as Kat said, this area is sort of a bit of a child care desert. Statewide, we have a shortage of child care. There's about one available seat for every four children. In this area, it's one per seven. So the need for child care is great. And I think adding, um, well, what was up there, the uh, conceptualizing, looking at like uh, 100 seats. So it would add 100 seats for child care. And when we say child care, we're really looking at like anywhere from infant toddler through age five. Um, so opening that up, I think, would really add some opportunities that families don't have, especially above the freeway. Currently, there are no child care centers above the freeway. There's some family child care, but it's really limiting. So this would add some opportunities that currently don't exist. Okay. Thank you, Ted. So I understand that uh, Councilman Augie Tilber is in the house. Augie, where are you? There he is. Thanks for being here. All right, so here's what we'd like to do, and to keep it simple, we really want to hear your questions, and really you're going to be the spark, if you will, for the conversation. We have a microphone over here. It would be good so everybody could hear what you're asking. If I can answer something, I will if you ask it of me directly, but if you ask it of anybody up here, as I said earlier, with their expertise, want to be able to talk about it, you can ask us anything you want. The only thing I want to request is that even though this is your meeting, this is not a night for speech making. We want to hear questions. So I reserve the right, if you go on too long, in your introduction of your question, to say what's the question, without insulting anybody, okay? Because that's what we want to do. I think to make it worth your while, we want this to be as relevant as possible. We don't know what's on your mind, although I know we got some car guys in the room that already told me what they're going to ask us. Uh, but, you know, we want it to be like that. So I don't know who wants to kick it off, um, but we're ready to go. All right, Dr. Ken, right? Y yes, you may. Go ahead, yes, since you're right there. Thank you. This person said, don't embarrass me. Here I am to embarrass him. I'm here to represent more or less the Toastmasters. We are training for public speaking, so we have no problem speaking in public. At least we're trying to look like we have no problem with it. My problem is there are questions. One, we have a problem here, a crisis of homelessness, not so much without homes, but they are taking our homes. They are taking the curbs as their home. First question, how many of those people are here? Thousands, 50,000, 3,000? I like to know the number. Number two question, what's the demographics? Who are these people? Male, female, age? What are the abilities to find jobs? If you have a job, how do you contact them since they don't have any address? They may have a cell phone, but they don't have a physical address where they can be notified to go to work. Number three question is, when I call the police to tell them we have a homeless guy starting set up 10 here, are you coming here to address him? What questions will you ask him? How do you help him? Three questions. Thank you very much, Mayor. All right, we have Jim Allen come up first. Thank you very much for that question. Um, part of my department is emergency medical services. We respond to 911 calls for homeless. But more recently, we've developed the core program, Crisis Outreach Response and Engagement. And Anton here with me um, was the brainchild behind that. And because so many homeless people have medical issues, mental health issues, addiction issues, we felt maybe it was better served by a department that is used to doing medical response, EMS, rather than a police response 
Um, because homelessness in and of itself, a lot of these folks just need help medically, sometimes financially, sometimes mental health, sometimes addiction. And I feel once we make some more progress in that area, then whoever's left that, that they're doing the, the criminality, it's a smaller proportion and we'll leave those folks for HPD to deal with. Um, we've been working very closely recently with Council Member Tolba and um, we've had some very productive meetings with him and his staff about bringing core to Waipahu. Um, we have two core units right now very active in the Chinatown Waikiki area, um, but we've identified this area. Um, you know, I work out here too, and my private medical practice has been out here for a long time, and I see the changes down Farrington Highway and the businesses and the people struggling. And the demographics, it's all kinds of people. It's people who've lived in Waipahu their whole life, it's people who've migrated from other parts of the island, it's people from the mainland. So it's a real mixture. But there is a lot of drugs, unfortunately, and there's a lot of mental health issues. And I think um, CORE is evolving, but I think we have a good plan how to deal with this. And I just ask that everyone just be patient. We've been modestly to, uh, yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna um, overstate what we've done in Chinatown, but I feel very good about the reduction in Chinatown and the homelessness. But we wanna translate that success everywhere. Um, so it, it's coming. Um, we have a core hotline. I can give that to you, um, you know, after the meeting. It's a, it's a non-emergency number. But I think working with your council member out here, I think we've got a good plan for Waipahu. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to you. Could be other Major Trinidad, I'm going to ask you to speak to the police part. Okay. So that's a good segue to the to the police part. So homeless, you know, it, it's very complex, as, as Jim was pointing out, and, and CORE is a great step in that direction. We're also looking at other, other programs we can do, like hygiene centers. We're working with a council member on that. Could, would that be a way to also, also help people transition from where they're at, their issues, into uh, job training, and then you know, in, into being able to work? At the same time, we have safety issues. And so we, we're going to do a pilot. It was passed as a resolution in the council on picking an area, especially close to a school, and maybe do uh, cleanup and sanitation efforts like on a weekly basis so that we, the, the, the people that are going to the school will be able to um, do that without having to interact with that. Because like Jim said, homeless, homelessness, by the way, is not a crime, but the drugs and those kind of things are. So, you know, that's what we have to deal with, both sides of that. So we're going to do a pilot. We're going to probably do around Waipalo High School. Council members helping us with that. And then we're going to see, you know, how that can work for us and how you feel, the community feels about that. Thank you, Mary. Dr. Kim, we met earlier, yes, and you talked about, you, you actually live by Kiki, sir, and um, everybody's been saying, again, um, it's easy to call HPD. We're basically a band-aid solution. We're short-term. Again, we agreed that um, homelessness is not a crime, and it's not a law enforcement issue, it's a community issue. We all have to be in all at once. So for us, it is easy. That's what we're here for. And you said your friend, he said, um, why bother the police, right? Is that what he told you? No. That's what we're here for. We work for you. We wouldn't know about it unless you call. We would love to be everywhere at once, but it's through you folks, sir. Like you can, we talked earlier about your Toastmasters. I'm a Toastmaster too, so we got to talk. But in regards to that, again, we're a Band-Aid solution. And again, if they're doing something criminal, yeah, that's where we come into play. But as far as like Dr. Ireland said, additional help. We can reach out to the resources. We're not the experts in everything. But law enforcement, we can take care of that. Basically, when they come out, we worry about the safety, not only for um, ourselves for um, EMS for fire so for you folks that's where we come into play the public safety part again please do call that's what we're here for so we wouldn't know about it unless you call I'd like to think of the community as force multipliers we would love to be everywhere at once we cannot so that's where we come into play again it's not a law enforcement issue it's a community issue and that's what does this dialogue right now this is great we're talking about it yeah go ahead sir uh, by the way, I'm also a retired veteran, 25 years U.S. Air Force, Go Air Force. <laughs> and we do have to take care of each other. One reason I am calling almost every day HPD was I was very worried about the repeat offenders. You have people set up tents, you know they're there, and they set back up the tent after the person who didn't care too much about that person. The re one person that I'm really worried is the one who sets up 10 across the Capitol building. Everybody can see it, and yet for 
five days in a row, nobody moved them. Okay? So when they say, ask me, will you be there? Maybe next time I'll stand right there until the police come. I'll ask the police, what information are you getting from this person? What's his name? What are his abilities? How do you guarantee he won't be coming back? Because it affects their job, it affects ours. So these people need to learn the respect for common citizens like us, not taking up our space. All right, thank, thank you, you, Ken. Major, anything you want to add to that? Um, no, he said it all. I'm, I'm actually retired Army, so go Army. <laughs> you know, homelessness has been around for decades, and I can tell you it's at the top of our list. But one of the things that we knew coming into office was the fact that what was going on with the sweeps wasn't really dealing with the major issues. And this core program that we're dealing with and the work we're doing with the police and the prosecutor's office in the judiciary is first and foremost to separate out the criminal element from those people who are homeless. And about 50% of the people right now that are out on the streets, and Ken, you asked the question how many, I only have the point in time count to go by. That's the official number, which is slightly under 5,000, maybe a little bit more than 4,000. I think that number is probably higher, but it's a scalable problem. Still yet, when you consider what that represents as far as our percentage of our population. But this is a problem that's plagued us in other cities all over the place for a long time. Our approach that we're doing here is separate the criminal element. We're asking for much stronger law enforcement on that. Um, Prosecutor Arm, who's not here tonight, but um, you know he's got his weed and seed program. We got safe and sound in Waikiki. We have arrested a lot of the bad guys, but we're having a hard time right now keeping them, you know, behind bars. But we're really cracking down on the criminal element. The other people that are out on the streets, it's not an easy challenge. It's been estimated that 50% of the people who are out on the streets have been out there for 10 years or longer. And a much higher percentage of those people are either mentally ill or they're, they're alcohol or drug uh, addicted. That's not an easy group to work with. And so that really takes us to the next phase that Jim didn't really mention, which we're now working with the state office um, with the state, with, with Governor Green, on what we want to do with respect to permanent housing solutions. We just can't put people in treatment centers, uh, not treatment centers, but in shelters. We know that that's highly ineffective, especially for the kinds of people we just talked about. We need to be able to provide treatment for them. And that's a whole new wave of what you can, you can anticipate we're going to do. And uh, Jim and I were just talking today uh, about, and we've made this commitment, and I said this in my state of the city, the city has owned facilities that we can turn into treatment places by need the wraparound services from the state. And that's what we're going to be able to get because we've got to be able to treat them that way. In just the first year of CORE, we found probably over 300 homes and treated more than 1,000 people on the street with medical triage while we were building our CORE team. CORE today is 30 people going to 50, all with a lot of expertise, trained professionals, we had three ambulances. This year we'll have four ambulances and four SUVs. So what we don't want to have is have the police be the tip of the spear on homelessness. That's not what they're trained for. We want them to be the tip of the spear on a 911 call where something that's going on is not good for you or this community. That's what we want them to do. And we want to be able to pick up through core people that are out there where we can take them to places where they're going to get treatment and we have the resources to do that. And we've actually had a long talk today with Queens Hospital and what they're prepared to do as well. This is something we may not cure completely, but if done the right way, we can, we can make a significant impact on that. But this is a decades-own problem. I'm not gonna make any excuses. We've been in office for a couple of years now. First year plus was COVID. I can't tell you how much of a distraction that was. But I'm very confident and the strategy we have. And as Anton was putting together that strategy, we looked at the best practices and who was doing it best in the country. We looked at Denver, we looked at Houston, we looked at Eugene, Oregon, and a little bit at Boston too. There are cities out there who've had some great success and that's what we're just beginning to do and we're getting some great traction and we're committed to doing that. So I'm gonna say it again, within the homeless population, a lot of bad actors who hide there who take advantage of the homeless people, who are criminals, 
and we're dealing with that. We've probably arrested 40 of the biggest offenders. We don't make a lot of publicity about that, but we know who they are. And so um, it's gonna get better. That's all I can tell you right now. And any questions you have on it, we'll be happy to answer. Next question. Ernie. It hurts, so I know you guys' names. This is good. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Actually, um, I am here because of uh, uh, the group uh, whom I uh, requested for an audience with you almost one year ago. The um, uh, landowners of the Midas of Royal Cunha in Waipaho. Uh, it will be one year next, year, next week, Mayor, and uh, their request for... Uh, a uh, temporary access to their lot. It's very sad to note that they purchase a lot that do not know that they want to enter the, the place. And uh, um, there is a problem, of course, of the permit. I, I know you're aware of that, but uh, Mr. Tony Ipalari called me uh, yesterday that please come with me because I cannot talk in front. He said, and so uh, I'm here, Mayor, being your uh, uh, ambassador to the Filipino community. I uh, took the chance to come tonight. So, Mr. Tony, uh, I'm here now. Please stand up. Uh, there was a scheduled site uh, visitation supposed to be in October, Mayor, but uh, it was canceled. And I, I know the uh, Department of uh, uh, Permit and Planning is, uh, director is here. There was a scheduled um, site uh, visitation supposed to be in October, but it's now March. But I know uh, everybody is busy. So, uh, it's just a request for a temporary access mayor to, so that they can enter to their lot wherein um, a lot of uh, things happening there that they do not know what to do because they cannot enter their property almost uh, uh, 110 land uh, owners mostly Filipino farmers so Mr. Tony I'm here now and um, I will hear from the mayor what will be what should we do mayor this is a very complicated matter because I've met with these men in our office. He's talking about a lot, lots that they bought, right, that they no longer have access to. So I'm going to ask Don, are you familiar with this at all? All right, so here's what I'm going to suggest, Ernie, on this particular topic because we have discussed this already at Honolulu Holiday. After this tonight, you're going to stay the whole time? If not, Don can meet up back. We'll get down some specific information and we'll get back to you because this is... There's a lot to that, that situation, and you know that, okay? So um, we will handle that tonight, get the information, and be able to get back to you. And I promise you, in front of everybody, you'll have a forum with us once we get more specifics, because honestly, I want to understand where it is today. I think we talked about this first a year ago, correct? Yeah, okay. All right, yes, ma'am, just come on up and... Take the microphone. No need to have a line. I can promise you we will get to you. So just, so you no. just cut, Lee, you just cut in front of this lady oh, who was making sorry. a beeline right here. Come on, <laughs> Lee, because I know I what would, you're going to I would ask. like to, since it's huh? relevant to what this man said, as a resident of Royal Cunea, yes. I would like to know some of that information also, because what's affecting you also affects our community, uh, because we are living right next to these lots, uh, you, and, and while we feel for the, the people that bought these lots, we're also concerned because we would like to know what's going to happen on those lots. We would you, like to know what the plan is going then, to be for that property. Then it would help me greatly if you could give us a little bit more color on that lots because I didn't quite understand all of that that was being said. So if you could help us. So the lots are where? The lots are right in the middle of Royal Quinea. It's where the proposed golf course was supposed to go. Okay. Um, it got sold, resold, and then it got, they got permission from Department of Planning and Permitting to split it up and be sold. So Ernie's group is a bunch of farmers. And you're not a farmer. I am not a farmer. I'm a resident in Royal Quinea. I own a house on the outside of all of those lots. Okay. And we want to be good neighbors. We want to find a way to work together. But it's, there's a lot of uncertainty for it for us because we've had reports of people getting sprayed with pesticides from those lots. 
we have reports of, of people trespassing to get to those lots. So we, we sympathize that you, you can't, there's no legal way to get to your property. We sympathize with that. Okay. But and that's we, the issue, right? There's not a legal path. You own the property. Actually, Mayor, I am not an owner of any, any parcel of that land, but, You're not, uh, but they, but they referred is, it to me. They yeah. own the property, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They and and as I understand it, you say they cannot access the property to do their farming, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? And your concern is not whether farmers are... What, what is it you're exactly concerned about? Well, there's a great big spot in the middle of Royal Quinea that's not being used for anything in particular. There are some places that have garbage on it, like refuse cars, you've seen it, yes. Um, there are some places that have fences constructed, um, and it's okay. All right. I think questionable we'll get, whether I, the permits have been obtained for those. Okay. Um, some of the permits that have been obtained say there's like sewer hook up there. There's no sewer hook up in that area. So there's a lot of questions. So I just, as a homeowner, any of the information that happens, I would really be interested in hearing Absolutely. it too. No, we'll maybe even try to get some of that tonight. Don, you want to come up? I think. Thank you. Thank you. This is really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So now I, it does ring a bell. This area that has some um, some issues, and I think there's some land use. Um, approvals by the state. So we'll look at it and then I think um, your issue is somehow related but we can, I'll give you my card and we can figure out what's going on. Thank you Don. I appreciate the question Ernie, we appreciate this. Okay Lee, you guys, come on. We'll be, we'll be quick. No, it's okay. I just, I just, she was coming. I just, you didn't see her coming over. That's all. I'm Lee Kobe, and I'm here with uh, Bobby Govea. We're we're with the motor motorsports people. I uh, just want to also let everybody know. Uh, State Rep. Um, David Alcos from Kailailoa is over. He came in with Augie, I think. There he is. <laughs> uh, uh, State Rep. David. Uh, Dave Alcos. Hi, David. Good uh, to see you again. Thanks for being here. So I have a real simple question, and I want to pr uh, thank all the motorsports guys that came in. And to meet the mayor, and uh, so you know, Bobby was over at Wina, you know, and he goes, "Hey, yes. man, I, I met, I met Rick." Yeah. And I asked him, "Does he support the uh, public track for Oahu? You know, like the way the other islands have?" And he said, "Yeah." So I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, we support. It. Are I'm you gonna, in support? I want Mike Foreman to come up and talk about this as our managing director because this is a subject even before getting to office. And I, Mr. Grace, right back there. Uh, I, it's passion. So let me just, on a way of a personal note, I absolutely support anything and everything we can do That's good. to Stay give good. our local people <laughs> more things to do that they can have fun with their families and their friends and have activities that just bring people together. Absolutely. I, you know, we, we don't have enough of that for our local... Yeah, I, I got it. I heard that. Okay. Michael, you want to take a shot at this? <laughs> Well, the question was just for you. <laughs> yeah, just add a little bit to it. I know you've been waiting a long time. And we have talked to the community about the process we're in with the Navy. The Navy gave us constructive title to the land, but they're still doing environmental studies on it. And as soon as they conclude their environmental studies and we can take actual title to the property, that's what we plan to do. There's sure. a lot of acreage, and we hope to make room for a racetrack. So we totally support the awesome. idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor's behind it, and we're going to work as quickly as we can with the Navy to I, get that property. I really property. appreciate that. You so know, please stay in touch with us on that. Thank you so much. No, yeah, absolutely. I want to also thank Daryl Turner from Napa, Hawaii. He came here, and he's a real busy guy, and I uh, just thank want to you. say hi to Darryl, him. Daryl, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all you motorsports guys that came. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ireland used to bring the the ambulance. ambulance guys to my motorsports shows at the Blaze. Though yes, we have the <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dr. Jim Ireland, Dr. is a man for all seasons. Oh, yeah. You know, he not he only gave you a good deal he too. not only races cars. He's a mixed martial artist. <laughs> he's he's just unbelievable. He's, thank you so much. And I also right, want to you. give a shout out to Rep. Uh, Sam Kong, who's been behind us also. Sam. 
with the getting the STEM cl classes going with the kids and yeah. supporting the UH I, race I team. I asked him if he knew you. He said he didn't remember you. <laughs> but that's okay, Lee. Well, thank that's you nice. so much. You're thank welcome. you. You're thank welcome. you guys. Thank and you, everyone. Here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for you guys. All right. Joe Barati, nice to see you again, sir. <laughs> Mayor, uh, first of all, we'd like to, I think collectively, we'd like to thank you for doing something that's unprecedented by having all of these people here in your administration. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. One of the, one of the things I've noticed in traveling around and in, all throughout the state, especially um, here in Honolulu, is the uptick in graffiti. I mean, I see it everywhere we go, and it's really a blight on the community. And I'd like to know what the city, what your plans are to mitigate that and eradicate yeah. that, if you can. That's a, that's a great question. I don't disagree with you about the amount of graffiti. I'm not sure who I want to turn to and ask back here. Michael, okay. HPD has the best program of reducing uh, with community groups. Okay, so Chief Vanek, Mike just told me HPD has the best plan for reducing graffiti. Chief Vanek, Roddy Vanek. Hello, aloha. Um, you know, I just wanted to share that this particular area is close to my heart because when I first got into the department, I worked in the Pearl City, Waipahu, Aea area for the first six years of my career. So um, there were many sleepless nights that I stayed away from my family. So um, a lot of the issues that you folks still see to this day is something that is very um, near and dear to me. As far as graffiti goes, you know, our Honolulu Police Department has a graffiti hotline that is accessible on our website. So if you see um, areas that are particularly nu um, a nuisance and they continue to come up and show up in that area, um, go to our website, look for the graffiti hotline. It's under information. I believe you can also send an email to the various districts. So you can send email specifically to the District 3 um, Pro City Police, which takes care of this area. Um, tell them the location. I don't know if you can um, submit any type of um, pictures or anything like that. Of course, you could always call 911, but it, it wouldn't be considered emergency. The best way is to go to our website, leave the information. That information will then probably get sent to our Pro City Police Station. They'll, they'll send it either as what's called a... Um, um, it, it's, it would be like a project that we assign to our officers so that they can um, look at it. Also, we work with other agencies as far as, or we do community cleanups where we um, paint it out and we get community members involved. So it's probably the best way to do it. If you see someone actively graffitiing though, that's something that you should call 911 for. Um, try to meet with the officer if you can, especially if you're able to um, give a description of the individual who's doing it. We may know who that person is, and if we're not able to catch them right then and there, maybe just based on the description or if you have a picture, we can provide that to like our crime reduction unit officers who may know that individual, and then we can maybe make an arrest or something like that later. So, yep, thank you. Okay, does that answer it for you, Joe? Okay, great. Sir. Thanks again, Mr. Mayor. George Grace from Wainai. Um, I had an opportunity to talk a little bit about waste energy in the Wainai one. I'm just here to cont continue to encourage you. I had an opportunity to talk to Mike and um, Roger earlier, share some thoughts with them. I'm gonna send them some stuff. Okay. But um, you know, landfill, no matter what you make them, if you have to make them, it's gonna affect everybody here in this room. Even if it's not in Waipahu, it'll affect family members, the value of their land, traffic, um, sicknesses, so on and so on. Even the cost of getting rid of rubbish is going to be affected, depends where you make the landfill. So I'm just here tonight to encourage waste of energy, let's burn the rubbish, so we don't need a landfill. Yeah, Thank points you. Points well taken. We, you know, we'll look, and you know this, we're looking at all sorts of technology. H-Power, a number of years ago now, has been a major breakthrough for us. I was on record last week at Wai'anae saying we will not put the landfill out there. We're under a challenge here by 2028, I think it is, to, to name a new landfill. We're looking at alternatives. I understand everything you're saying. At the same time, we're looking at all the technology that's available as well. I, I believe okay. in you. I think you can get it done with your talented staff. Yeah. Enough energy is put in it. We wouldn't need a landfill. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi. My name is Evelyn Alo, and I'm the Executive Director at Hawaii's Plantation Village. 
Um, oh, Evelyn, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. You're the executive director where? At Hawaii's Plantation Village, right oh, yeah. down the road. Hawaii's Plantation Village, yeah. yes, go ahead. Okay, so, um, you know, like everybody else, we have a homeless problem. Of course, our area is wide open, so they go through. The past several months, if not a year or so, we've had a lot of destruction that's been done to our property, our homes, and everything. But um, I wanted to find out why we are not able to put security cameras in our village, because we're told by Parks and Rec that we're not able, so I need to know if somebody can get back to me on that. Well, okay, Evelyn, hang on. Um, where's where's KL? Yeah, do, 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 you know, do you know about this? Okay, yeah, right. that's I, fine. I don't, really, honestly, I, I, I don't know who told you that. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. That doesn't sound right to me. Well, yeah, and then every time I call the police, like for about two months, every week they were coming out. I mean, it was a lot of property damage. They're like, we're just security cameras. I said, um, we're told we couldn't. Major Trinidad, you wanna say anything about that? I, 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 I will have to find, I, I can't believe that that's true because you can buy home security cameras now. Exactly. Anybody, any place. Why would a place like the village not be able to do that? I, I don't know. We uh, were given, we were donated cameras about two years ago by a company. And um, we had some people who were going to help us put it well, up. They're really important. We're, we're looking to install 52 cameras in Chinatown alone, which is more than double what they used to have. And then we have one working now because of all the benefit from that, especially how it helps police work. So, Major. Yes. I just got to this district two weeks ago. <laughs> I would love to meet with you. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm, I'm outright serious. Please. I've never, I have 32 years in the department. I've, I worked in Waianae, I worked East Honolulu, I worked in town, I worked in Kali. I've never worked here, but the thing is, I'm Filipino, I have cousins here, my kids go to St. Joe, so yes, I'm tired to commute, but I would love to hear from you afterwards. Okay. I'll give you right. my card later. Yeah, and Evelyn, Mike's giving you his card. Mike is managing right. director. And then I can give them my card also. Okay, yeah. we'll, fo we'll follow we'll up on this. This, yeah. this, should, this should be easy compared if to I, our situation with Ernie. This should be... Right, you would yeah. have thought, but um, yeah, it's, it's been frustrating. Frustrating for okay. us because we non-profit and we, yep. yeah, we take in on the We don't cost. want you getting persecuted, okay? Yeah, and then I just got one more, one more thing, sorry. Go ahead. Um, okay, so... Thank you. Um, okay, so when you were elected about um, three years ago, you committed to three years of funding for weed and seed um, in the Waipahu, um, and Waipahu area is one of the three weed and seed sites. Correct. So right now, where is the money? Because we know it has never made it to weed and seed Hawaii, the organization that is responsible for weed and seed, not the prosecutor's office. So that's another question of that. So the Weed and Seed program is not taking place in Waipahu? Because I've heard that it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Um, I'm also part of it. It is a big part here in the Waipahu community. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I misunderstood you. What's, what is the question then? The question is what happened to the funding for the Weed and Seed of Hawaii that was committed so if you can, okay. you can get to us, you can get uh, back to me later. Well, Evelyn, we'll talk to you yes, about that because yes. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. But I know that the program is going on. If it was something we said, well, look, um, we're really committed to the criminal thing, okay? I mean, mm -hmm. to, to all the bad actors. Uh, I've said all along, every one of these men and women behind me represents a discipline, if you will. And they all told you tonight the things they do. And we're pushing a lot of a major initiatives up the hill all at the same time. But if there's something that's more equal than all of the other programs we're working on, it's public safety. Okay. Okay? Because people first and foremost deserve the right to be ho feel safe. So um, Mike said we'll talk yeah. to you. I, I don't know okay. the specific answer, uh, but just know that we are probably more committed today than we were before because now I understand it much deeper and, mm. and Quite honestly, I have a lot of contempt for, for the bad guys, for what I better All right. say. All right, thank okay, you. Thank you, thank you for right. your time. If you could introduce yourself, that would be helpful. 
I'll just set it down because I'll fidget with it the whole time. There's more people here than I thought, so smoking nervous. Um, aloha mai kako, my name is Sandy Ward. I'm the executive director of a community nonprofit, and I'll admit we're around the corner where your neighbors in Eva Beach. But I'm a retired school teacher, and I've been blessed to have lived and worked in the Eva Moku for half my life, 30 years. And I'm here tonight because we were invited. Um, the amazing students from Waipahu High School came up with a vision because like many of us, they see that a lot of uh, city and county lands in Eva are neglected. And it's a, I work with half of the people up there and you have an awesome staff. So it must be beyond their capacity. So what the kids at Waipahu High School said was, hey, why don't we fix it? Why don't we take the weeds and rubbish and put food and native plants? So our nonprofit was invited in to help. And it took a year to get permission. And God bless, we went through an email circle until we got right back where we started. And then thank you, Mr. Formby, you were in New York, but your wonderful staff made it happen. So now, a year later, because that project is going well, Barbara Tom and the folks at Waipahu Inter have another amazing idea along the bike path, a seven acre garden. So they said, hey, you, you got it done over there. Can you help us? get through the red tape. So we started in August, and now it's almost the end of March, and I brought um, all the paperwork, everyone that we've met with, and our nonprofit offered to assume the liability. We got that policy, and we offered to help with logistics because we were invited in. And by the way, we work on 21 acres at Kapapapuhi Point in Eva Beach, right across from Queens West, and we love what you're doing at Makalapa. Thank you. So the kids of Waipahu High School the kids of Campbell High School, the kids of Kapolei High School, we envision a beautiful green space corridor along the bike path right in the shadow of that beautiful rail. And we haven't asked for money yet, although, but we also haven't asked for help yet. What we've asked for is permission. So my question is this, when community wants to come in and take care of business, can you all work together on a streamlined way to make it easier so it doesn't take a year and it doesn't take six months. And I want to know the status of our current request for an MOU to support the beautiful Malai system yeah. that the kids at Waipahu Intermediate and Barbara Tom, if any of you know Barbara Tom, when she says jump, I say how high. Um, she works with Safe Haven Waipahu. Okay. And uh, it's a beautiful vision, and we want to get it done. So I'll, um, I'll, Mr. Formby, I'll give you all the goodies, and I just urge you guys to make it easier for us to help you take okay. care of business. Sandy, I love that. Thank you. Thank you for the work you do. Is Council Member Toba still here? Is he still here? Because I want to say, because I, I, I went riding down that bike path with, with Augie. Augie, where are you? This is the same place we took the ride on the bike path, right? So here's like the fascinating thing about what Sandy's asking me. So the city owns the bike path. And on one side of the bike path, it's state-owned land. And on the other side of the bike path, it's federally-owned land. But we own the bike path. So I don't think we can give you an okay on the land, per se, as the city. It says on the map, city and county, because I'm just going by what Councilmember Tober and I were talking about. We would love to see that beautified. We we went out and looked at that. So. Mike Formby, Mike, For that's who I call. I call Mike Formby. When we get, when we get to moments like this, I call Michael. Yeah, we'll help, look, we don't wanna, look, we've done a lot of Makalapa. I've been out there a bunch of times. I, 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 I thank you for the acknowledgement. We don't wanna be obstructionist. Mike and I talk all the time. Part of our culture is to come in here from a leadership standpoint and be facilitators, not be the bureaucrats or the regulators who say no to everything just because they can. So anytime the community is willing to step up and help and take that initiative, especially when it comes to young kids because of the tremendous value of that, I'm a thousand percent behind that. So we'll just find out about it. Look, I never saw you before in my life till just now. 
I'm just telling you, I appreciate your experience, what you're doing, and we'll try to help you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad, Sandy. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Todd Matsumoto, Volkswagen Club of Hawaii. So I got more questions on the, the racetrack. So say, say they do their environmental and you get the permit. What timeline are you looking at? Like how long before you, you get this environmental check? So you know a lot about cars, right? Yeah. You know a lot about tracks, right? You tell me how long it takes to build a racetrack, because I could tell you it takes about 15 years to build a stadium. You tell me how long it well, takes to build a track. If we got the land, it already got a, yeah. a, a so runway So what do you there. think, though? I'm just we don't, curious. We're not looking for a whole racetrack um, building and everything. We're just looking for somewhere we can get off the street. Yeah. These kids racing at the freeways. Sure. No, I, I no, mean, I guess, it's been 17 it. years since yes, we had no place to go. You know, I understand. It's Look, a hobby I'm, of ours. So uh, I'm, I'm just asking after you get the environmental assessment and you got the permit. I, I don't know. Who's That's why I'm asking you since you are in that area. I'm well, not trying are, to be Who's going to bill it? Are we Well, like, are I, we I, well if we this would be a city owned. This would be a this would be no this would be a city project. We would do that. I, okay. I, I, I look. So we already got acknowledged from the Scorps to get funding through Scorps, yeah? You know outdoor programs. Good. You know. Um, but then we just kind of you know, we're all getting old. Look at all these racing guys. We're all old, you yeah, know. Yeah. I we're not you. doing this for us. No, no, this no. This is for the next generation. I, that's why I introduced you know? Lindsay earlier. It's so all about the future. I don't yeah, disagree. We all want to race too. I just don't know how long it will take to build a racetrack once we get no. there. So how many more years you got in office? Because the next mayor might not be into this thing. Yeah. And then we're, this is like our last chance, mayor. Okay. This is well, the look, last property on the island. The whole island, this is the last property, Kailai Loa, where yep. it's all contaminated. No, no, and I've been our out race there. cars will contaminate it more. So, you know what I mean? You can't build park, you can't build a park there, you can't build anything that's, you guys have to be some kind of motor thing, right? Motor okay. sports or whatever. But well, I'm just wondering. A, I think this side of the island lacks in a lot of recreational stuff, mm -hmm. not just a track. And we talk a lot about that, about gymnasiums, well, pools. We've got some parks. We've got parks out here. But given the population, I still think it's underserved that way. And that's one of the things we're looking at. I just don't know how. I want to be honest. Remember what I said at the outset tonight? Got the most population. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know, and I don't think anybody up here knows how long it would take to build a track. If somebody does, you're welcome to stand up and tell them. OK? I'm asking you, as somebody who's really into the sport, if you have any background on that and what it takes, yeah. Well, it does, if we got if we got that property, I think okay. we could do we could we got some guys that already build stuff out in Waianae on a dirt track. You know okay. what I mean? So right, we, I okay. Yeah. Let's get there, Todd. Yeah. You asked me how long. I'm counting on being in office for the next six years. I can't predict the future, but I'm counting on being in office. Okay. Yeah. We ought, we ought to be able to. We Wait, ought, it's ought a to hobby. Be able to Everybody get. has a hobby, and there's a lot of you know hobbies in the island, golfers and. But, you know, everybody has something to do. But the race guys has nowhere to go for the last 17 years. We've been on this island. We have three racetracks on all the other islands. Right. We have none. We have nothing okay. here. We have kids racing on the freeways at night. I mean, we, you know, it's, you want to get people from stop driving fast on the roads, then maybe a racetrack might get them off the street where right. they can, you know, I got release you. the pressure, yeah, off there. Here's your buddy. So this, is either reinforcement, <laughs> this is either reinforcement <laughs> or, or, or they're going to give you the hook. There's I don't know. I don't gonna give we you all spend a lot of money on this, uh, you know, on our cars. We it's got it. Sitting in the Look, garage for we got 17 it. years. We man. got it. Okay? You know? Todd, you can't yeah. filibuster this. We understand. Yes. You, okay. He can answer you how All fast right. he can Is there anything else right? you guys want to say? I said no speeches, but since the preponderance if, of you guys if, are this, go ahead. Go if ahead. we get the property, the track can be built within two years. Okay. If we get the property, I can put on a race within six months. I run the races down at Waianae. Some of you guys know me. My name is Jim Souza. I'm, I'm, my company is 808 Off-Road Racing Promotions. I, I ran races in the stadium with my stepdad, Island White Toyn. We did the monster truck shows, those mud races shows. and stuff I saw like those. that. I, did, uh, I do a lot of off-road okay. events. Try to get these people off the road and give them a place. 
Now, one of my friends, one of my customers, Milton Bradley from MKD, gave us this small little property for us to do something together and bring all our races out. But we're talking about off-road. Yeah. Uh, the track is different. The track's truck. different. But like I told Lee, I can put on a race, as, but we need the property. Okay. And I found out that some of these uh, ASC's assessments was already done. And they found out that part of the property was contaminated. And I don't know what he's telling us is something different right now. Um, I was told from, from Lee that the, the, all his stuff was done already. Okay. <clears throat> so th there was an additional assessment done and they discovered more chemicals and they went back and did another assessment. We're not doing it, the federal government is doing huh. it. The Navy is doing it. So as soon as we get that report from them and we know exactly where these chemicals are, then we'll be able to take title to the land. Okay. So I it's... it's Thielen, Laura, I had a meeting with Laura Thielen a few months ago and she said that they was doing another assessment, but from the paperwork that we got, it said that most of it was done already, yeah. Well, there is another environmental assessment going on by the federal government because they found additional chemicals and I think some of the chemicals they found are PFAS and Ernie Lau can tell you about PFAS but they need to figure out where that contamination is before they give us actual title to the property. So we're not holding up anything. We're just waiting on the Navy to give us the final report so that we know where the chemicals are and that we know what property can be used. But we have no time, we have no timeline on that. So we just... I can't, I mean, that's what's uncomfortable for us. I can't give you a timeline. I can just tell you that the Navy tells us they're gonna conclude the report. Once they give it to us, then we can start the process of the title transfer. I just can't tell you, to, I would like to tell you it's gonna be six months or a year, but I can't because I'm not in control of the process. The Navy is control of the process. So as soon as we can get it done, our commitment is we'll move on it. We have no reason to delay this. There's absolutely no reason for us to drag our feet and not get the land so that you can build a racetrack. We have no reason to do That's that. That's all we need to know. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you, much. Mr. And, and, Thank I, you. and Jim, I appreciate what you said about the two years. I don't know. That sound, but I'll, I'll make this promise, okay? I'm just, you have to trust me on this. Okay. I'm going to write right? this down. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you feeling that? Next week, Mike and I are meeting with Admiral Aguilino in my office, okay? He's the head of Indo-PACOM. I will ask him directly about this subject, okay? I promise okay. you we'll do that. I thank and, you. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to um, everybody take time to reflect on the last mass shooting, Re reflect on us in Hawaii. Violence has been increasing. I'm pretty sure we're all aware of what can happen. Can we take a moment of silence, bow our heads for the people at Tennessee and Nashville yesterday? I know there's not much we can do individually, but as a whole, we gotta respect each other. We gotta get around this. We gotta get in front of it now, because it's gonna happen. And being Hawaii where everything's open, it's just so much easier, okay? Um, but that wasn't my question, okay? My question is to Ernie. As I understand it, our water, fresh water supply is unsustainable in the future at our current rate of um, usage. At what point in time we're gonna have to go to desalinization or other alternatives to um, our fresh water supply on the islands. Uh, if everybody heard the question uh, about fresh water supplies unsustainable, uh, the big unknown is climate change. So our water resources that we provide to almost a million people every day, uh, we have to produce 145 million gallons every day on average, comes from rain. So changes to rain uh, can change our water resources over a long period of time. So we're 100% de dependent on groundwater. We are in the process right now to, in the procurement process, to develop our first seawater desalination plant in EVA. Because a lot of people don't understand how um, sensitive our water supply is. One earthquake and we can lose it. Right. The, the lens, the freshwater lens is so getting thinner that one um, major earthquake could um, disrupt it. Uh, we, I don't know about an earthquake, but over pumping the water resource is a, is a risk because it's fresh water underground in the volcanic rock in the cracks and crevices of the lava rock that's floating on salt water that soaks, un, uh, permeates under the island. 
So if we over pump, we can draw more saltier water up. So we have to moderate how much we pump to maintain just the right balance to keep the water fresh. So there is still a, a certain amount of supply. I think we're estimating maybe close to 100 million gallons left in this freshwater capacity island wide. Uh, but it is something we have to monitor very closely. The other aspects of this groundwater resource is its vulnerability to contamination. Because except for the coastal areas where we have something called a cap rock geologic formation, which is uh, marine sediments and deposits, not as permeable, but as you move inland, uh, not over the cap rock areas, away from the coastal areas, basically what you put on the ground, if you take your waste motor oil or your pesticides that you want to get rid of, you throw it on the ground, eventually it can make its way into the groundwater, uh, into the aquifer below, even though it's hundreds of feet below. You know, I thought it was a great opportunity to um, get the military involved in incorporating desalinization plants on the island. They have the money that, to do it, and those plants cost a lot of money. So we have an opportunity. Uh, uh, it is, I, I'm going to be very frank with you. Uh, we're in the procurement process, so I can't reveal the details. But desalination is expensive. I have personally worked on desalination when I was a young engineer back in the 90s at the Board of Water Supply. Uh, but we never did the project. Uh, and so, as you know, 30 years has passed, and prices don't get any cheaper for this technology. Uh, but we are going out uh, in the process to see if we can do our first seawater desal plant. And the reason for that, we need to start today to start to diversify our water resources. We're dependent on groundwater that originates as rain. With long-term climate change, 50 or 100 years from now, if the winds change, if the, uh, the pa um, wind patterns, the weather changes, and we don't get as much rainfall to recharge our aquifers in our watershed areas along the Ko'olau and Waianae Mountains, then ultimately over time, this freshwater aquifer that's below our island, be below our feet, will start to reduce in capacity. And we see that already happening on the Waianae Coast. Rainfall there has decreased over the last 30 years. If you go to Mount, Ka uh, Mount Ka'ala, uh, rainfall uh, 30 years ago was about 105 inches uh, per year annually. Uh, today, that's around 60 something, 65 inches a year. So you can see the decrease in rainfall is happening on the Waianae mountain range. Uh, fortunately, the Kolaus are still doing pretty good here. Uh, but I guess what it is is we cannot take our freshwater resources for granted. It is a gift from Keokua. And we need, man we need to protect it and use it wisely, uh, manage it. Uh, but we need also need to move toward diversifying our water resources uh, to come from other sources. And I believe seawater desalination is an obvious one. Are you going to mention the fact we've, we've invested $25 million into desalination plant? Uh, yes, I actually, you know, the, I appreciate the mayor and also the council. Uh, so the, they have... Uh, they're using uh, what the mayor is referring to as American Rescue Plan fiscal recovery funds. These are federal grant funds that don't come from water ratepayers. Uh, we're we're going to be given 25 million toward this desal plant, and because of the late the work of the late Senator Dan Inouye, through the Department of Interior many years ago, he uh, he passed an appropriation that would give us another $20 million to that seawater desalination project. Uh, we have the land, 20 acres right now, that is free of cost. When Barbers Point Naval Air Station closed many years ago through the BRAC process, uh, we requested land, and the federal government gave us 20 acres right close to the ocean, which is where a seawater desal plant needs to be. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mahalo, sir. Very, thank you. Thank you, sir. David. Thanks again for coming, David. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you for all your support and what you guys are working out there. Um, I'm speaking about the racetrack again. So, um, no, no I normally I kill it after two. Yeah, no, I, I'm here I, to help you. Okay, I, thank I'm you. I'm working with, a, I'm representative for District 41, which the racetrack, looking out, these guys looking to put them in our community. And I'm supporting them, whatever it takes. As you speak, you want to be 
a partner with the community. I want to be a partner with my community. And they're asking that we understand that the Navy is taking a long time for the, um, the reports. But we asking as a community, we want to bypass that. And if there's anything we can do to skip that and get the report ourselves, let us know. We, we're here to partner with the community, with your team, whether it's accessing a beach or helping with the raceway, protecting our family lives. Use us, use the community, use whatever we can do. We understand sometimes they take time for paperwork, but we want to save lives. I lost a family member, you know, speeding on the road. There was a girl just got hit from another car um, by, is that Juan Alua? Or radio? Get on ghosts in the building. <laughs> but, you know, Mr. Mayor, just use us, and I just want to really appreciate all your time, and you gave your word. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. Hi, Mayor. My name is uh, Alan Cuvido. Alan. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is thank you for your support. Uh, my, my question goes to the good, uh, the good sir in a long sleeve. When you guys get the report um, from the Navy, is it going to be public information? And if it is public information, can you explain the process of how to get, get a hold of that, uh, that report so we can um, get some maybe um, out, outside inquiries or experts to kind of take a look at it also? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what the Navy's plan is as far as the report, but because it's paid for with taxpayer dollars, I think it will be a public report. And when we get the report, we can confirm with the Navy that we have the ability to release it, and we're happy to share it with you. And I also okay. mentioned to the mayor that um, next week, Admiral Aguilino, who's the top admiral, top four-star head of Indo-PACOM, U.S. Indo-PACOM, is coming to the mayor's office to meet with us to talk about how the military can partner with the city and county of Honolulu. And I think that's an opportunity for us to talk to the admiral about other than these lands, these BRAC lands that have been turned over to different communities, do they have any other military lands that might be available for us to use to not have to wait for this process? So we'll ask all the questions and see what we can do. But when I find out about the final report, we'll be happy to let you know. Okay, and just one other thing. I um, just want to reiterate, there's a deeper value uh, than just a racetrack and it being recreational. Um, I did. 25 years in the Air Force, 17 years was in recruiting, uh, the, with the recruiting command. And uh, the mechanics, electricians, and just anything in engineering is what the Air Force is looking for. So, you know, um, you guys would be, as uh, leaders and facilitators for the state of Hawaii, you guys would be taking um, people like me out of, you know, um, being a statistics to HPD and uh, hopefully be retired like me at, uh, in 2016. So um, I ask for you guys' assistance in um, trying to get the racetrack done. So what you're saying now is a lot of vocational opportunities in every racetrack, yeah, that, right? Uh, there was def there's not only vocational opportunities, yeah. I'm not gonna have to worry for the rest of my life because I have a paycheck for the rest of my life. I got you, okay. So, there's, there's, there's serious opportunities yeah. out there for the, and it's also for the good, younger generation. And, and, and it's also good business. So, yes. I mean, if you want to take it to those, we, we recognize that. We really do. I wish we already had one. I mean, it would be, you know, uh, so we're going to see what we can do. Yeah. All the okay. support you guys can uh, give, uh, we appreciate it in advance. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, my name is Richard O'Shiro. I'm also a member of the... The Powell Neighborhood Board. Uh, I just Is it Richard? You said Richard Rick? Oshiro, yeah. Richard, yes. I've been asking this question for quite a few months now. I see Director Babcock, he knows that I've asked that question. Other, and others from your administration that have come to our meetings. And I've asked our council members the same question. And the question I have is, um, when is the Waipahu District Park pool going to reopen? And while I'm at it, I might as well ask, when is the, way, the Pro City pool going to reopen? They've both been closed for uh, going on six years, maybe longer now. Uh, these are city facilities, and I can't, th th this is not the stadium, this is not heart and rail, but th th these are our community swimming pools, and 
for six years, what that meant is that uh, the summer fun programs, the learn to swim programs, uh, you know, it's been shortchanging the kids in our communities. So if you can, if you don't know tonight, can you find out no, for I know. sure? I when, know, I can't when, be prepared tonight to answer your question, Richard, because well, obviously you haven't gotten an answer yet. No, we got an answer, but it keeps moving. Oh, So okay. I thought that you would make an announcement tonight. I will. On the reopening. I so will. if you do, then that's to your credit. So I can't if you can speak do about, that tonight, tell us when it's going to reopen. I cannot speak about Pearl City tonight, I, but I can speak about Waipaho. Okay. That's the, the main question. So tonight if you is have March, an announcement today, Tonight is March 30th, right? Today's, no, yeah, right. Yeah. March 30th. So the pool is going to open on June 1st. <laughs> the pool is going to open on June 1st. Okay? Well, I think that's close enough. That's close enough. Yeah. You know, I tell you, and I appreciate this, and I'm not saying this to denigrate anybody. Right. We've been in office for just a couple of years. You talk, it's been happening for six years. We were hamstrung a lot in our first year plus because of COVID, we understood that about the pools. We've talked, we, but June 1st, it's going to open. So there's your announcement. There's your answer, finally. And I push, what I, July, May 1st. Whoa, May 1st. Scott, I'm sorry, I thought I heard June 1st earlier today. What? I got lost. May, we just, what a negotiator you are. Unbelievable. <laughs> you just got, just by standing there with your, with your jaw dropping at the fact that I actually gave you a definitive answer, we just moved it up to May 1st. Well, thank you very much, Mr. You're, Mayor. You're uh, welcome. It, it's been six years, so. I know. I, Look, I, I hope I, that you could make you, that announcement tonight. You know what? This, this is in the same context as the racetrack. This is the kind of stuff that makes me crazy. And I said a few minutes ago about the fact that on this side of the island, we lack gymnasiums, we lack pools. And then I found out something like the Waipahu pool has been closed for six years. And you sit there in the first question, why? Why? So I'm very proud of Lord Thielen and Kehau Pu'u and what they've done in Parks and Rec May 1st. I'm sorry I got that wrong. For some reason, June 1st. That's even better. A month from now. No, that's great because it's just in time for summer fun. Summertime, yes, and right. they should reopen the pool and have yes. all the swim, swim activities, swimming activities that uh, you should be having. So I, you know, we're just, we, we don't know each other. I love the fact that you get up tonight and you're championing that, that you believe that strongly. Uh, this is why this, for us, is such a great experience to hear people from the community standing up for their needs. Thank you. I appreciate that. May There's 1st. There's more, but I'll, I'll save that for another time. Thank you. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, good, uh, good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, thank you for uh, having this uh, important meeting so that we can see the executives of the city and county of Honolulu. I know that uh, without you, we cannot reach our goals as uh, a citizen in this uh, uh, city. As mentioned by uh, uh, Ernie a while ago, that uh, I'm the vice president of the Medios of Royal Cunha, wherein our problems will be solved by all of you, all of us. So I hope that this meeting is uh, uh, a start of our uh, journey to uh, attain our goals and objectives in the medias of Royal Cunha. What, what? So now, sir, uh, thank you. For the past three days, I've been waiting for the news in the evening to verify if our meeting is really going post -row. So thank you very much for all of us. God bless everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we, um, amongst ourselves, we talked about why we wanted to do this 11 town halls with our entire cabinet in 10 weeks. I, I can promise you, it's ex for exactly what's going on here right now. And even though you may not ask a question of a number of these people up here, we wanted our team to be here because we wanted everybody no matter what their discipline is, to be sensitized to what the needs are in our respective areas and what it is we're trying to do overall as a team because the questions are different from town hall meeting to town hall meeting. So we're gonna to get together afterwards with you and Ernie and get some more information on this, okay? Uh, 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 Frybell, right? Frybell. Yeah, yeah, how are you? 
Aloha, everyone. Aloha. Uh, my name is Froybel Garcia, and I live on the beautiful windward side of Oahu. Well, the reason I'm here is that uh, I have a notice of violation uh, for my uh, home. And, uh, and then I called the inspector and he told me to uh, write a letter to uh, the director, uh, Don Apona. So I obeyed that. I wrote a letter once, twice. I followed it up after two weeks. I mean, within these weeks, those days, no one's answering. It's just going around and around the corner. So now, what I'm asking for that letter is that, you know, I wanted to get an extension because it's going to be ending this uh, April 7. So I don't have time to do the blueprint, look for an architect or a draftman, for whatever is involved in there. So I'm worried. Uh, you know, I'm a good citizen in this country, in, the, in this state. I, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, have that kind of, uh, it's my first time to have violation. Uh, this kind of thing. So I felt like I, I'm a criminal. So you're, you're that's the reason I'm so worried. You know, so Donna Puna, I wrote a letter, I emailed you. Uh, the, the, the call, it says uh, Tamayo, I emailed the Tamayo, I called, and nobody's responded at all. So please, do something on this. How about, this is, this is better than special delivery. This is Don Apuna. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frodo. So I can look into it. I'll give you my card. And so if you're having, you need more time to, you have a notice of violation, but do you have a notice of order as well? I just wanted to clarify. Yes, I have a notice of violation. And a or notice of order too? Uh, I'm not so yet. sorry, I'm not too familiar with that. Okay, so order. if you have a notice of violation, right, that's the citation. If it hasn't moved to notice of order yet, then mm -hmm. the fines have not begun to accrue. Um, but you need more time to fix your violation, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. But, uh, you know, I'm so stressed, so I called all my uh, people that I know. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm so good, uh, good thing that, you know, I know somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason that, you know, it went forward. I, I don't know if I, well, I, I called the uh, lieutenant governor. He's a good friend. And uh, okay. he called up, uh, Esther I, uh, S. My, my council yeah. member, mm -hmm. Esther yeah. Kayaina. So right, just right there. So what I'm saying here is, if we don't know anyone, those people that doesn't know anybody, what's going to happen to them? So no, at least now it's going on there. And uh, I'm so fortunate that uh, last week, oh, I mean the other day, uh, I believe Tuesday, I got uh, uh, the, the permit. So now the drawing is still going on and then, uh, you know, hopefully, and it's just three times for, for the penalty for that. So I just really don't know. And this house is, this, the, I have a permit and that, but you know, with the uh, violation that the, this guy gave me, uh, I enclosed my second floor. And uh, my understanding of that, when I asked before, that was uh, 20 year, years ago, they said it's fine. So. But I'm doing a repair right now on the outside of the house. But these guys just looks like just been pointing me. Uh, you know, because uh, the violation actually, there's a complaint in the other home. Uh, so now I think he's seeing my, my construction right. going on there for repairing on the outside because it's deteriorating. All right, Friable, here's what we're going to do. Just, we'll get your name and number right after this. We'll, we'll take care of this. Okay, one, one thank of you. The things, one of the things I didn't say to you is we're recording this whole meeting. Um, and the reason why we're recording it is because we're going to go through the tape and make sure any questions that we think we didn't satisfactorily answer tonight, I know we're offering some personal contact too, yeah, that we're going to make sure we're real thorough on that, okay? But Friable, I appreciate that. I'm sorry for your frustration, obviously. Sir, we have about 25 minutes left for those of you who are thinking about asking a question. So, go ahead, <clears throat> sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for putting all this together. Um, my name is Nathaniel Orpilla, Waipahu High School graduate, class of 96. Um, I haven't lived in Waipahu for over 15 years, but Waipahu is my home. Um, I volunteer at the high school for the past 27 years as a leadership, we run a leadership camp. Um, thank you, Henry, um, Brandon, for always supporting us at Waipahu High School. Um, I don't know if, if I have a 
I have I had many questions, but um, just like how Henry, Brandon, Augie, they're my voice for the community. I feel like I need to be a voice for a certain group of people. Are there any Micronesians here? Yeah. Um, I used to work at Hawaiian Electric for several years. I think I had a calling. I don't work there no more. I, work at, I used to work at Goodwill. Um, a lot of my clients, I was an employment counselor. 90% of my clients were COPA, uh, micro, uh, people that came over from the Marshall Islands. Um, so what, what is your question? My question, it's not so much a question. I think what I'm trying to say is there are no Micronesians here, but they are such a huge part of our community that don't understand our culture. And I know working with Best D, I, I think that's right, Best D, Best D, um, Human Resources, that they don't understand how to get these resources. Um, like I said, I worked with 90% of them. They're great people, family oriented, very religious, but there's no, our websites are awesome, great information, but there's no way to relate what our culture is to them. All right, so they're look, I'm scared. Not gonna, all right, I don't want to be rude, but in the interest of time, because I don't want to have anybody hanging out. I hear what you're saying. I want you to hear from Kim Spalling, who is our Deputy Director of the Office of Economic Revitalization, because actually we have a resource for you. And so, Kim, I'll let, I'll let her explain that to you. But let me also challenge you as a leader in the Micronesian community. We do something like this, you get them here. You, can, you know, we can only do so much. So if you're wondering where they're not here tonight, I can't answer that for you. But if you're that concerned, get them here, because we'll be back again. Remember oh, that. Okay, yeah, I'm not Micronesia, I'm Filipino. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying that they're not here because we're not getting out there. I, right. I'm not sure how to do it. I can do it 1% at a time with my clients. Well, well but... hear, hear what Kim has to say. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, sir, for that question. We're really proud of our Pacific Islander liaison that's in the Office of Economic Revitalization. Um, this position was set up during COVID to handle the, the health crisis, and exactly what you're talking about is that misunderstanding, that cultural difference, that talking you know, kind of away from each other and past each other. We're really proud of the work that she's done to help break down some of those cultural misunderstandings with Parks and Rec, with DMV, and you're absolutely right. They, they're, we do have a voice within our city government, I'm proud to say, that does represent the Kofa community. I'm gonna give you my card afterwards, we'll get you connected. She does webinars twice a month. She's been doing things about good jobs, working with the Department of Education, working with, we just did one on summer fun, because we need that representation in many of these jobs as well. It's gonna lift our community if we can do that. And so we, have, we do have that voice. It needs to be louder. We want to amplify that, so we're glad that there are people like you out there that are representing this community. If there's anything that you hear, connect with us. Whatever we can do to help, that's what we're here for. All right, thank, thank you. you. Look, I love the fact that you stood up for this community. Thank you for doing that. But my challenge still remains because you're a leader, and so help us help them, okay? Yes. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Hi. My name is Terry Tumbaga. I'm, I'm a White Pahu resident. And my issue is the Honolulu 311 app. I've uh, put in some requests for to have street signs to be fixed, especially on White Pahu Street. I went back and I've had cancellation notice and nothing has been done. I called the Department of Transportation requesting information on the status. I even gave them the uh, uh, number that each um, request is generated by the computer. And they never receive any information okay. or any request to have anything done. Okay, what was your first name? Terry. Terry. Stephen. He's from the IT department. Yes, okay. sir. In regards to Honolulu 311, I do know that there was um, 
It depends on when you actually put that request in. I do know at the beginning of March there were some issues that we did have that repair. Do you know about when those requests went This in? was submitted in January, January, and I followed up with them today, and they said they never received any requests. I was referred to two other phone numbers, and all the, the other two individuals um, have all said they have not received anything, and they are the supervisors for that area. So my question is, how can you have it fixed if it's not canceled? You know, in other words, why would we have a cancellation no notice or have something like saying referred to the Department of Transportation, the status is being worked on, there's no status information other than close or cancel, and that's it. Okay, one, I guess, one avenue there is there's another selection called other, and so that's another way to get it in there because Normally what's supposed to happen when somebody puts a request into HNL 311, it normally goes to like the bigger departments like HFD, DFM or whatever. But for those other departments, if you put in other, it goes actually goes to CSD and then they determine who it should go out to. So that's just another another method of getting getting that request in there. Yep. But in regards to your request, um, I'll give you my card and let's see if we can figure out like where it where it got lost because Normally what's supposed to happen, it goes in HNL 311, and in the, I guess on the back end, there's another system that it goes into that actually gets to the department. It's a system called OneView it, that goes in there, and so that's supposed to get out to the departments as far as um, that request to make sure it does get handled. But um, I'll give you my card to make sure, yeah. at, least, at least to track it. Then. Right. Um, thank you very much. I just was wondering if you could put in another um, part on the application saying it's been referred Okay. or working on, so that a user know, hey, yes, the city and county is aware of this issue that okay. I have presented as a citizen in, in Oahu. Thank you very much. That's good. No, thank so you. Chair, make sure you get his card. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you're up, sir. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. My name is Dave Rodriguez. I'm a resident of Waipahu, Waikeli area. Hi, um, my wife and I and a couple of family members in the Waikeli area uh, put in requests for a raised crosswalk or something to deter this uh, speeders going up across Lumiana from Manager's Drive. Uh, and also Lumi Ao'ao has the same problem on their end of Waikeli. And um, it's sad to say, but it's one day soon, someone is gonna get hit and pass away from getting hit by a driver. Uh, so it's really bad intersection there. And I thank the police for sometimes putting speed traps up and also being present at times, but it's not enough. Uh, so if you can help us with that, we really appreciate it. You know, we're getting a lot of requests for that. And I'm seeing more on the roads. In fact, we've, you know, we've had some stuff go on. Does anybody here want to take that on? Or we give you, we can get the exact addresses, John. I think maybe if you can meet with Dave. Dave, we'll get the address, get the street addresses. We'll look and see what we can do on that. Okay. okay? It's mainly the White Kelly Elementary School area. There's yeah. a crosswalk. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank no, you. Sir, I'm glad. This is great. This is great. Okay, sir. Good evening, Mayor and the Cabinet from the City and County. I've got a couple comments. First of all, I appreciate the fact that you grabbed all of these people to come out to this, because I think it's important for the, for the community, not only Waipahu, but the City and County, to understand and to be aware of who these people are. So I, I want to thank you for, thank for you. initiating and doing this. Second comment is, you introduced a young lady here with respect to your program to get young children interested in government. I applaud that and I appreciate that. And I wish her much success in, in, in doing that program. If I could just say one thing about Lindsay, you, you see how articulate she is? They're all like that. It's a really exciting That's terrific. for me. It's, to see these. it's comforting to know. Yes, okay? I, I, I agree. Lindsay, I don't mean to embarrass you. But you get at then, least one compliment. Now I'm going to throw out a couple more. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, is anyone in this room aware of any, any illegals being shipped or sent to the city and county of Honolulu? I personally, when you're talking illegals, you're not talking about U.S. citizens flying here from Minnesota you're talking about from some other place, right? Okay, I just wanted that, to ask that, you know, because on the, I, my, the nightly news, 
Yeah. You hear or you see all of these right. people from all over the world coming into yes. our country. Yes, we don't have border crossings like that. No. Okay. Right. We got, we got the Pacific Ocean, right. But I just wanted to know if we are being uh, sent people to take care of. You know, I don't know if anybody here wants to take a shot at that, but I, I would tell you, I think I'm pretty much in the know in the mayor's office. That's not come up under any okay. circumstances. That's comforting to know. Okay. And my last question is, I worked for the federal government in Washington, D.C. for 27 years, retired, came home. One of the things that really is disappointing to me as I drive around our city is the condition of a lot of government responsibilities that are just going to the wayside. As an example, anywhere you drive in the city and county, there are places that weeds and everything, it just looks like hell. Sorry for the language. Okay. It's okay. Who is going to take on or who is responsible for any kind of beautification yeah. for the city. Well, of those areas where the weeds are grown, the city's responsible. I'm not passing the buck in the state. I want Warren to talk to you about that. Our Department of Facilities and Maintenance uh, is the department responsible for that, and Warren's our deputy. Warren? Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, we are working on that issue, that, uh, solving that problem. You know, for many years, we've been uh, short-staffed, and uh, recently we have uh, made a big, huge move to hire uh, laborers and groundskeepers. So uh, we are working, uh, scheduling uh, in all the districts. Uh, right now we're kind of concentrating uh, with stream cleaning, but we also have uh, a plan moving forward to start uh, you know, cutting uh, or taking care of the landscaping in the median strips and also between the curb and the sidewalk. So you know, as we continue to hire you know, we increase uh, the, our labor force and uh, we're gonna do our best to schedule for all communities to maintain uh, the city's uh, right of way landscaping. Well, okay, thank you, appreciate yeah. that. And one last pet, personal pet peeve. For me, I cannot understand and I will never accept why there are trees growing in medians out of walls on freeways. I, it, it just baffles my mind. Some of it I understand is state, okay? And we got some state reps here, okay? Let's get on that and get those trees out from in between the walls. It just doesn't make any sense. No argument. Thank you. <laughs> well, how we know. No, uh, we're, we're ripping up a whole garage at, at, at Honolulu Holiday because, you know, for, how many years ago? 40 years ago, Michael, they had this cool idea to plant all these trees on top of a garage, an irrigation system line. Somebody forgot about what the water was going to do to that rebar and cement and the roots and the havoc it's created. You know, I, you know, I don't know. I could, must have been a fast-talking landscape architect. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Um, good evening. Uh, William Kapoor, resident of White Powell. Uh, just... Quick question, just to write on the uh, CORES team. Uh, this is more for the Office of Homeless, so um, okay. I wonder if they're gonna expand or reevaluate looking at the Honu sites. The ho Honu sites, the Honu sites. For, right? the, for the Leeward area? Yes, yeah. yeah. Honu, uh, where's Honu gonna go? So we, we've had Honu here twice and, and at the plantation. We've also been up at Whitmore, right? And we were at Onaula Beach, and now we're moving in on the Waianae Coast. So that is going to be up there for about 90 days. And then um, it looks like the next location after that, we're not exactly sure, maybe Waimanalo, maybe another location here. Um, we're also looking at a second Honu, developing that. And so that's what we're trying to do. Do you, do you feel like Honu is a positive experience and, and, and is effective? Well, when, when I used to, yeah. When I used to see it, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So you, you may have, uh, if you experienced it at all, thank you, Jim, in, um, when we were at the village at all. But Honu is a, is a temporary 
shelter. So we, we have these very sturdy tents, and they're, I mean, like hurricane sturdy tents, and we we're able to put folks in them. Now, we originally had 18 in a tent that we could put in, in, in pieces, but when COVID hit, we had to separate everybody out, and so we had all these pup tents that everybody was in, right, down at KE Lagoon. What we did is when we, when we started back as COVID subsided, it turned out that the 18 wasn't so good. So we put the pup tents in the big tent because people felt they had some privacy, they could have their dog with them and things like that. But Honu's goal, really, it's a, it's a 24 by seven intake. So if CORE has somebody that they wanna take to, to uh, Honu, they can take them or we have transportation. HPD, it's a 24 by seven. So it also gives them the capability to ask somebody to move. We have a shelter for you, but we need you to move right now because right where you're at isn't appropriate, right? Then when they, when they get there, when we do the intakes with them, then we're working on placing them, right? So we, we get to know them, we feed them, they got shelter. Some come to Honu for protection. You know, a lot of, a lot of people that are homeless are preyed upon by other people, bad people, right? And so they actually come to Honu for protection. But while there, we're working on, uh, can we send you to a shelter? Um, maybe, what's your story? Could maybe a return to your family, right? And then sometimes we do permanent housing. But I, we have a very high success rate when people come into that program. About one in two get some kind of placement, whether it's shelter, return to their family, permanent housing, or many times the return to their family is return to the mainland. So that's what we do. We, we, can, we take up to about 80 folks at one time in, in, in one, of our, one of our groups. It moves, so when we do it, it's, it's in a community for about 90 days, and then we move on. But it's a really a, a homeless triage center, if you will within the system of, of the different things that we can do. Thank you. Last two questions right here. Hi, good evening. Um, super fast, easy question for the bus and the rail. So I ride the PH3 to work, um, to and from work. So if I ride the rail to Aloha Stadium, where will there be shuttles to get people from oh. Aloha Stadium on two bases. On I don't want to base. frighten you, but he's standing right next to you. Who's that? Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer's yes. <laughs> yeah, I just, I <laughs> So absolutely, um, we can talk further on this. Your PH3 route is not gonna go away. If you do choose to use rail, we will have a very frequent service that meets the, the rail at the Aloha Stadium station. We're gonna have a PH8. PH8 will shuttle you frequently from there to into the base along the same route that the PH3 does. And what we hope to do, we're trying to work with Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam to actually pre-screen you at the station, uh, check your ID so that the bus can just bypass all the lines. Ooh, yeah. Imagine that, right? Okay, yeah. Faster. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you get the honor of the last question of the night. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Mayor, you, you've inherited a real ugly problem that occurred six months before you took office. I received a notice of violation, I guess you all called it an NOV, dated June 30, 2020, and it gave me three orders, you know. Order one demanded Oh, and this whole thing is about um, my alleged pollution of a storm drain near my home. Anyway, Order 1 demanded that I, I cease this alleged uh, pollution. Order 2 demanded that I clean the storm drain within 24 hours of receiving <laughs> And order three is, you know, demanded a written plan on how we would clean it, and then a best practice written plan on how would uh, how, how I would never do that again. But what's scary about it is, it the NOV contains this statement, and shall be subject to an administrative fine of a minimum of $1,000 to a maximum of $25,000 per order, 
per day. <laughs> so you owe the city how many millions? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so um, I, I'm not concerned about order one uh, that I seize this alleged yeah. pollution because I didn't. And uh, but order two demanding demanding that I clean it 24 hours and right. order three. Uh, I'll tell you here. what we'll do right afterwards. We'll just <laughs> but, get his but, information. Uh, uh, if no. Uh, I mean, it's almost three uh, years today, later. Okay. 1,974 panel days have accrued for order two and three. And according to this NOV, I owe a minimum of $1,974,000. Yeah. yeah, honestly, I was doing the math in my head, and I thought it was a couple of million bucks. <laughs> well, I, you, you know, if, if I allow this to go on further, if I can't resolve yeah. this, I'll, I'll probably fund your rail shortfall. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very kind. That's very kind. Well, but, maybe you could throw two million into the racetrack these guys want, uh, and we'll call it even. All right, but, Warren, you want, well, take uh, But uh, if, if you allow me to cut, um, I really tried. Actually, this occurred on on the first of June, 2020, where I I saw from uh, my home out out at the I live in a cul-de-sac, but out at the mouth of the cul-de-sac, I noticed work work, and so I went out to chat with them, and and I had to, had a chance to look into the they they had the manhole open. And I had had a chance to look into the manual and, and saw the accumulation there. But anyway, when I, I called plumbers immediately, and they, they said, "Wait, we don't do that kind of stuff." And I, I so anyway, I retained an attorney, and and everyone told me. You know, let let the attorney do all the talking for you. Right. And, and this attorney had uh, this NOV had named two points of contact. Okay. So anyway, my attorney, I, 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 and I, I don't know what was said between he and the contacts, but he came down to me and said, "Yeah, you better go ahead and." Have it cleaned, and and the uh, director of facility maintenance, his contacts, provided me with uh, three contractors, you know, who did this kind of work. Yeah. So I, I immediately uh, called one, and he said, "Oh, his equipment is on another island, so he couldn't work right away." And the second one said, "Oh, yeah, I I can come over." And assess the job, you know, by yeah. by uh, running a camera through through the storm drain and things like that. So and anyway, I'll so I need your question, sir, because oh, our oh, team okay. is going to stay for a little bit and mix with people. And I said I oh. wanted to end at eight thirty. So, oh, what's oh. the question? Oh, okay. I, I'm I'm trying. <laughs> I, I'm trying to resolve this. Uh, because it's still an open, okay. active NOV, and uh, while the city hasn't um, threatened to collect against that, I, I don't want to leave it open. Uh, I, I, I and, hear the concern. I can share your information with him. Yeah. No. So well, I'll let Warren talk with you. We'll get the we'll get your information. Yeah, and I, I I know this is specific to me, so. And I, I really believe my problem requires your intervention, so can I well, speak to you after? Well, I'll have you talk with Warren, I'll talk to you as well, and we'll find out. Look, I'll tell you, um, you're probably going to read about it. In fact, there was an editorial in the paper, and that's not on this subject. But for all that we're talking about public safety and all of the other issues, right. um, 
one of the things that I'm concerned about is, is, is the kinds of things you're talking about and people who do things, I'm not suggesting you did, who think they can get away with it, they get fined for it, and then they, they, they don't think there's any consequence. I'm a big believer in consequences. I'm not saying this to be threatening to you, but I think we need to work this out and find out what the situation is because I think the city has been lax historically and then stuff happens. I don't like that. I just want to know where I'm coming from. Yes, okay? I, I appreciate that. May, may I meet with you after? Yes, we will. Okay, right. thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. What's your first name? George. George, thank you. Uh, one last question. Is it a question or is it a speech? No, no, no. That's a question. <laughs> Go ahead. We'll, get, we'll make the last one. Thank okay, you, George. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question. Go ahead. Um, it has to do with, uh, I live downtown. I've lived downtown on Baratana Street in one of the condos for 30 years. And I've noticed that the noise has just become oh. uh, incredible. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, 3 o'clock. So this question is for a uh, fire department person there and the, the police chief and maybe even the, the bus people. And so when there's no traffic, why do I hear whoop, 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 you know, going through the stoplights and, oh, and, the, and the ambulance as well. So there's yeah, you know, so much okay. noise downtown at all, all hours all right. when I think there's there is not need to be noise. Okay. So uh, Jim wants to take this question on the ambulances. I, I, I would tell you, the noise factor has been an issue for us in a lot of situations, but as far as police sirens or ambulances, it's part of the inner, living in the inner core. And since I live in a condominium on Baratania Street, I hear the same things you hear, okay? So I don't know how we would avoid our police having to put on, you know, their, their sirens and or uh, our ambulances, especially with Straub right there in Queens, not very far away, you know? So we could talk a little bit afterwards, but I can tell you this, because we've talked a lot about it with our police department. Monitoring sound violations is really hard. It's, it just is, so. All right, look, I, I want to close tonight on behalf of our team and just thank all of you, especially those of you who've now stayed for the last two hours. This has been a great audience. We hope that we hope that this has been a worthwhile experience for you. Like I said earlier, we're recording it. Any of our team that said they'll follow up with you, they will. I just want to thank you very much. and We're really proud to be here tonight in Waipahu. I want to wish you all, all of you, the very best. Thank you.